action movie reviews for more worldwide entertainment. Woman on TV.TV, iTunes 247 out of Franklin, Tennessee, and on now, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Amazon Music, Google Play, Apple TV, Comcast, and Pandora. So, with this, we have uh, nonstop Terry Marie. Hey, so being nice to you right now. Yeah, he's being nice to me today. <laughs> and yeah. The one and only Scott Page. Woo! Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, thank you. This. So, Scott, Good you've been busy you. doing a lot of stuff. You've been very, very busy doing a lot of things. Talk about all the stuff you've been doing because you had a lot of stuff. Yep. Ah, well, you know, when COVID hit, it kind of changed the world, right? I mean, everything changed. And I think it's very interesting to see the behavioral changes that are happening as far as the way we do business and thing we're doing. And we know it, coming out of the music entertainment business, you know, we, everything stopped for us. You know, this was big, our biggest year for Think. We were, my company Think Experience and the band Think X, and we were getting ready to do Jazz Fest. Uh, we were going to Europe. We were putting up this giant immersive dome in, in downtown in Long, in Long Beach, and then it stopped and everything just went away. So. I've been a technologist, you know, for many years and kind of a serial entrepreneur. And I just started to say, the minute that happened, I just realized that inside all this chaos is going to be incredible opportunities, right? So I started thinking about new ways of where's the entertainment business going to go? What are we going to do next, right? Where, where is it going to be? Because it's going to be a while before we're going to be able to start having big live events and everybody piling into the, you know, into venues and things. Um, and even if it does, I think the types of things that we're talking about with way communications is changing. So, you know, looking at what was going out there, I realized that, you know, the couple big things happened. One is we got forced five years of technology, you got user behavior of now using Zooms and FaceTime and how we communicate and how we're doing business. As we know, the, you know, if you look at the business world, a lot of people aren't going back to offices anymore. Mm -hmm. They're going to start working out of their homes. And this is now becoming a part of our lifestyle. I mean, you know, I'm outside watering in my yard and I got four of my friends on my FaceTime and we're like hanging out. One of them's cooking. Yeah. Like, you know, we're just like, we're just doing our thing, right? And it's just like they're there and, you know, glance down every once in a while. But there's a, it's interesting how it actually feels. There's a actual, feels lot real in a way, right? Now, it's not as good as the face to face. Mm -hmm. But then there's also a lot of other things that come out of this. You know, I was doing, going to, you know, over to Santa Monica all the time. I'd spend an hour there, hour and a half, two hours coming home. I, you know, get one or two meetings in the day. Now I'm going like four meetings a day. I can like, you know, in, in a couple four hour period of time, I can do a lot. So I think these user behaviors are going to change everything. So it made me really started thinking about where are the new opportunities, especially for artists. Because we live in a world right now where you can't sell music anymore. Yeah. There's no place to sell it. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Well, it's strange, right? You can't sell a CD. There's no place. I don't even have a CD. Somebody hands me a CD. I'm going, where do I put it? I have to run out to my old car. There's no Amoeba records anymore. There's no Amoeba. It's gone. Yeah, yeah. And so... Uh, so I figured, you know, where, where is the revenue? And I realized, you know, that's why I would think we realized that the model was moving towards experiences. Mm -hmm. So there, for an artist today, and uh, there's several things that, have, that, that you can basically sell, because if you can't sell music and you're a music artist, what do you sell, right? Well, one, it's the, the relationship. If you have, you know, you got an interesting lifestyle, people will follow you, and be part of it and support it. And then the products that go along with that lifestyle where your music is really more of kind of your mm -hmm. superpower and the rest, you know, the other things. And then the other one is an experience. So thinking about it here with this, with everything going COVID, I just realized that, you know, we're gonna have a live event, but it's gonna be a different kind of a more premium line event. Not as many people jammed in, so it's gonna be a little different. And then taking advantage of the real-time two-way communications, because we're now, it's not just a one-way stream. It's not like television where we just broadcast mm -hmm. out, right? It's now, you can be brought in stream. So I realized the opportunity to bring people in from a virtual space into a live event how can I bring them in so I can create an experience? And then the third thing that I realized, which is everything is now is delivery services. Everything's mm -hmm. becoming, we're getting used to, mm -hmm. people are used to going, hitting the Amazon Prime, bunch of stuff showing up, they got food coming from there, you know, the different services. So I realized by combining those, you know, a live event is a premium service, the two-way stream, how do I bring the, the, the fans actually into the experience? And third is if they're at home, I can deliver them something that can be actually part of my experience, right? Like we can now have a shared experience. Mm -hmm. So Livin is really, um, Livin, L-I-V-N dot live, and Livin is about one thing. We all want to get back to Livin. 
I mean, we're like, I mean, mm-hmm. we all have to get back to where it's going. And um, the idea was, is how do we, it's, it's based on thing. It's based on, it's based on rocking, laughing, thinking, tasting, and giving. And that's all with an N in the end. L- L-I-V-N, laughing, L-A-U-G-H-N, that's our, our brand model. And so we're going to do our first show where the idea is, is to have an event where people can be kind of a fly on the wall. So think of it like you're going to Studio 54, but you only get to go in, but you get to bring your virtual friends with you. And they show. So in our model, we have screens everywhere and LED walls with the people. And we have an exp- a way that we can now communicate with those people at the event so they can actually be there. So we have, you know, in the, we're shipping a box. We've got wine and champagne tastings. We've got coffee stuff that's going down. We've got all kinds of cool props to make it fun and interactive things that we can all do together so that the home experience can be, hey, it's Friday night. Let's hang out. We got a good two to three hour party, people coming over, and we can just hang out, be a fly on the wall, be part of this, get entertainment, music, and learn, and all these types of things in one space. So we're getting ready to shoot that, our first pilot. We did our experiment to test it, and now we're getting ready to shoot the pilot up, coming up on uh, uh, December 12th. Exciting. And all of a sudden, you guys will be part of it, because I know I'm going to bring you into this. Yeah, like this will be fun. You know, this is fun because you, uh, I remember when you were coming up with the concept of everything like that, just how it's mm-hmm. just growing. It's growing, yeah. And is it getting bigger, but at the same time, just keeping everything tighter? It's what it's getting, it's getting more defined, That's right? True. Because really for me, as I've now kind of think I've figured out how to bring people into this from a outside space mm-hmm. yeah. and how they can actually be part of it in a really unique way. because. They never get to, you know, people never get to be hanging out in the dressing room with the artists and Mm -hmm. stuff like that, right? And they don't necessarily get to chat with them, you know, even in the meet and greets, that's a specific ticket, but I don't get to hang out with them. So the whole thing is really making it be like, you get to hang out in the conversations and be part of the whole the whole experience and we have some secret little sauce that we're going to be unveiling on how we're going to do that which is a little different than everybody else so this is this for us is a really a grant it's an experiment to test business models i've got a couple data scientists working on this so we can really understand the data from this event because the idea is is then to take this concept and infrastructure because you know when you think about the the whole audience thing it's not only the live stack of technologies but it's also the, the online audience management piece of it so how do you keep everybody in the game so putting that all together then once we do live in we can do any type of shows things mm-hmm. through the, the same infrastructure platform it almost sounds like you guys are the first out the game it's almost like people are like growing who's going to be first that's what it sounds like i haven't seen anybody doing it like we're doing it yet and i think yeah. i think they're going to be surprised when we show them our secret sauce you know, because I've been a technologist for years, right? Everything, our whole show, the whole idea of the show is is to really innovate and show the latest in technologies and new things that can be, uh, you know, keep people interested in where we're going because, you know, I mean, everything is about tech now with everything Absolutely. that we're doing and now with, you know, these cell phones, you know, everybody's in the worldwide broadcast business. Yep. There's not a business on the planet that's not in the media business. I don't care if you're a trucking company. You're, true. you're posting stuff. You're trying to let people know what you do. Everybody's in the media business now. And uh, so the game is, is how do we, how do you build business around it? And because of the cell phone, you know, you got the three big drivers. You've got bandwidth now has gotten incredible. Storage is mm-hmm. cheap as can be. And horsepower, the power of these devices. And you have access to audience like we've never had before, right? Mm-hmm. Remember, whoever owns the audience wins. Exactly. So we're moving into the world where you know, Kevin Kelly years ago, uh, quite a few years ago, 10, 15 years ago, coined the term a thousand true fans. And a true fan is somebody that will spend $100 a year on you. If I have 1,000 of those fans, yeah. there's my first 100,000 in revenue, right? So the ability to go small as opposed to like, oh, I've got to go everywhere and try to get everything. It's more about building a hive. You know, that's my mm-hmm. belief that if you want to survive today, you need to build a hive. And that's the whole idea. You see this, the technologies like Facebook and then they all started groups. People mm-hmm. are going into groups because the, the mm-hmm. over global networks are kind of changing. People are moving into the areas of, of shared experiences, likes, mm-hmm. things that they care about and moving cocooning into those spaces. Mm-hmm. So that's really the new model is building a, a building a hive of people that really care about what you're doing and then supporting them. And an example would be, I have a friend that's a, she's a great singer. She was out on the Warp Tour, you know, several times, three or four times with her band. 
and we were talking about this and she says what happens with her she's she's got a clothing thing she does all kinds mm -hmm. of stuff besides her music but she says it's really she says she looks at it there's about 125 fans and they with all the things that she does cover her nut for the year she says anything after that is like gravy but she's built such a relationship and she services them with things with things they care about mm -hmm. and they love her so much because she's built such a great relationship they just support her all the time you know that's that old mentality of uh of the deadheads going to see the dead around the world. It's the the same. Trump Corps fans, which is, um, we were like that. We wanted to go participate. We wanted to go support those kids because you only watched them, what, age 14 to 21, and then you aged out. So right. I always looked at it, you got it, those deadheads had something going on because this is exactly kind of what you're doing. It's you're taking it to the next level. Listen, if you think about the dead, they really started a whole new model, right? They completely changed the landscape with the idea instead of saying, protect we we were all protect my media protect yeah. my media they're saying please steal my media it was funny we did this with a uh, uh, I worked with Monty Python for about 15 years and you know we developed all the CD I did all produce their CD rums I'm pouring water on myself because this thing's not very tight uh, so we did all their CD rums and we launched Python line mm -hmm. and I went to them and I said you know their their shows and their content is their treasured good and I said let's put a thing on the on your site that says please steal my media and we put all That's the media really cool. on it and we got people to just go with it. And so when we did, so we did a pro, we did a, um, um, a campaign for The Life of Brian, which was a remake of it. And what we did is we went out and found the super fans. I said, I need Photoshop artists. I need, I need bloggers. I need editors. And so who are, so the fans came up and, and I built a relationship where I got them on a phone call with the Pythons. We gave them some posters and stuff, but they were my army. They yeah, basically they really want a little, couple little things, but they're loyal. Mm -hmm. No, no. But what they did is we did that campaign, and they created thousands of pieces of media. Wow. So we did a thing where we said we called it Brian sightings, and the idea was we had them put Brian in every photograph that they could find. You know, so oh, all those famous photographs. You know, uh, uh, Elvis and the president, and there's Brian in the background. Oh, yeah. there's, you know, there's the, there's Marilyn Monroe dresses coming. There's Brian in the background, and we created a thing, and we sent these uh, mm -hmm. little things that we could get out to the community where they had pictures and stuff so that they could take a picture of their spaghetti and put Brian in their spaghetti and take it. Gotcha. So we just created a viral campaign by using the army, but they did all that. They did all the work they got together and it didn't cost us a bunch. So there's real opportunities with the fans today. I try to teach artists. I, I teach this thing called SPACE, mm -hmm. which is Story, Plan, Army, Conversion, Education. And what that is, is it's, a, it's basically a business formula for artists and it works virtually for any business. Mm -hmm. Story is critical because if you don't have a great story, you can't rise above the noise. And when I try to tell artists, it's not the story like, gee, I was born in Cincinnati and I played guitar and I grew up on the farm, blah, 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 blah. Nobody cares about that story. They care about what do you stand for? And I always, first that question I ask every, every artist is, what problem are you solving? And they're like, huh? Exactly. Solve a problem. Well, as a startup guy and you know, I'm on my fourth business, it's all about solving problems or mm -hmm. figuring out how to become great value. Mm -hmm. So what is it? Now you can't sell your music, so what are you going to do? And part of that is, so building that story is critical because for multiple things, it's not just about the story, it's the keywords and the date, the, all the phrases and things which allows you to go find your audience mm -hmm. if you start to learn how growth hacking works. Growth hacking is the whole idea of how do I use technology and marketing and understand the algorithms and how do I identify specific people that care of interest. So building the story is critical because it also gives you something unique to rise above the noise. And if you think about it, all the talk shows, like I mean all the music shows like American Idol, The Voice, the first thing they do is they go tell the story. Mm -hmm, they get exactly. the people to combine, you know, buy into the story. And once you know that, you can find things that people um, will identify with and that's how you build your audience because if you can find the right audience, your conversion level is going to be much better as you move. And so story, then it goes to plan. And I try to tell artists the plan today is there's a, there's a whole principle called the lean startup principles. And the lean startup is what they use in Silicon Valley. It's basically has a set of things. It's a one page business plan, right? And it's based on a set of principles. One, fail fast. If you have an idea, go out, test and validate that idea. If it fails, pivot right now. Exactly. So it's like it. fail fast, test and validate everything before you go spend, don't run out of resources. 
I hear so many artists, oh, I'm going to go make an album and stuff. And the first thing I says, where are you going to sell that album? This is not the work. There's no, we're not in that world anymore. And I said, well, then I'm going to go, once I get my album, I'm going to go out and start building my audience. I'm, by then, you're going to, it takes you a good year to build, a year or two to build a real audience, a real fan base. So people have to understand that this, the game's different now, and we have to think totally different about what the business models are. And so for me, I tell artists, it's about this. I'm an artist myself. I love art. But I'm also a businessman, and I love business, mm -hmm. and they're both artful. Business is an art, too. As Denzel Washington would say, there's no show without the business. That's right. And it's so understanding business, getting educated, and seeing how to use it, because now with this phone, you've got access to audience. I can go find audience and pull audience from so many places mm -hmm. that I can bring in, but I have to have a value proposition that says, why are you going to follow me? What, is, what am I going to give you? So, I mean, you always have to have that. Every business has to have something. So, you know, we go through that. I teach them the lean startup principles. They learn about the lean canvas, which is a one-page business plan. We go through that process. I suggest it for anybody in business, even when I consult with companies and sometimes mm -hmm. I'll work with the CEO and they'll, I say, we do a lean canvas. We go through the process because the important part of the lean canvas and the principle of that is it's not only tells you what you're going to do it tells you what you're not going to do exactly. which is so important because especially with artists and everything we can all flail make all kinds of stuff and have these big dreams but we need to be very tactful if mm -hmm. we're going to turn it into a business because if you don't have customers and they're not paying you it's a hobby mm -hmm. if you're getting paid it's a business now hobbies are awesome and in the beginning, you may not be making money, but you're building it up to get to a point because you got a revenue idea on how to business model how I'm going to make revenue, right? So it's, it's learning those principles. And then once you go through the, 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 lean, the, the lean startup stuff, then it's the A on the space. Story, plan, army. Mm -hmm. Super fans. We know now that the super fans are, for, are really with the data, because we have data now. We never used to have data, and that's one of the biggest drivers we have, right? We know that 60% of your revenue will come from one to 3% of your audience. It's the super fan that will mm -hmm. buy. So there's 60% of your revenue in them. So the first thing is identify the super fans and build your army like I did with the Python mm -hmm. thing. That's where I kind of really thought about it. I saw what the power of people that could you know make that happen. So you take the army, and then it's also the influencers, because the, my rule of thumb is influence the influencers. That's the first thing you do, mm -hmm. because here's the deal. If you can get somebody else talking about you that has influence, it makes life a lot easier than trying to shoot out to everybody, right? Mm -hmm. So you try to figure out who are the people that care about what you do, who are those influencers that already surround my sphere. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. So many artists and stuff don't realize the power that they have them around them. They might know, hey, the drummer. Well, the drummer's dad owns this bank and they do they do uh, they sponsor things and they do stuff so if i can create value for the guy that i have a direct connect to and i figure out how can i bring him into something i want to do create some value for him there's an opportunity to reach out to somebody right mm -hmm. so it's really understanding your sphere of influence and that army is critical because that's mm -hmm. really the game and then the next one is the c and it's called conversion all this doesn't matter if you're not converting. <laughs> yeah. We can do a whole lot of work mm -hmm. and get out there and get a lot of people going, yeah, this is great, but where's the, where's the money? Because as artists, we have to think about revenue, right? Mm -hmm. And business, because otherwise I have to go do something else to feed myself. So how do I create what, I'm, what I do every day uh, in love from just a small amount of people? And see, the thousand true fans, I've remodified. I say it's the first 200 fans. Mm -hmm. It's even past that because you can build a model. The idea is you build a repeatable model around a small group of people so that you're filling that and you get the more, and then you scale. Mm -hmm. It's not like going out to the world and trying to, you need to find that group of people that help ignite this, get the and ball then, going, and more importantly, it teaches you. Because if I can convert 200 people and get them to write me a check on a consistent basis for things, I'm building a model that's mm -hmm. repeatable. Right, that's a big part of the lean principles, a repeatable model, right? And the other thing about lean is, what is the smallest thing you can do that'll give you the biggest bout of bang? So you simplify things down to the small, I'm, I'm gonna go do that one thing because I look at it and I know if I do that one thing, it's going to get me to here, mm -hmm. as opposed to trying to do a bunch of things that may get me nowhere. Mm -hmm. And that way I can keep the cost down, I keep my time, I got my focus. So it's really thinking that. So conversion is important, and this is where you can go learn about conversion funnels. The conversion funnel very simply is basically the idea of 
let's say I meet you for the first time and I go, oh wow, hey great, nice meeting you Brian. And then, uh, nice meeting you, give me your email, I get your email, right? And then the next day you get a thing that comes out and says, hey Scott here, Brian, thanks man, it was great meeting you the other day. By the way man, my thing is blah, 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 here's a free something, right? Yeah. And now you're building the funnel. Mm -hmm. And the goal is, is you keep moving people through a funnel so that you build trust. Mm -hmm. It's all about trust. It's all about trust and it, it, that's the game, right? And believing. So. Through that, we through conversion funnels. So anybody out there, go to Google type conversion funnels. How do they work? It's so defined because Google, between Google and YouTube, you, you got a school. You, mm -hmm. There's nothing That's you true. can't find. There's nothing you can't learn. Somebody's going to show. Who goes on? Who doesn't go now? I get a product. The first thing I'm going to go do, I don't go through the manual. I go look for that product. product. He's going to show me everything and walk me through it, right? So we have that tool set. So conversion is really important because that's the idea. Whether that's converting them to sign up to your newsletter, buy your club merchandise, whatever it is you're trying to market. Um, that And then the last one is E, which is education. Mm -hmm. If you don't get educated, all those things I talked about were not going to work because you have to go to school. So I teach artists. It's like every day there are professional people that are spewing out the most beautiful information that will teach you so much. You just got to follow them and start finding out where the gyms are and learn from that. So it's, that's kind of the whole thing. And I think that model works today for virtually any artist. And because now we have, like I said, this device. We can not only not only find my audience, convert my audience, I can take the order. I can take, I don't need a bank anymore. I can take a credit card or I can take a Venmo or some so I will get a way that I can get paid. This is the greatest time in history for the independent artists. They just, a lot of them just don't know it yet mm -hmm. and they have to understand the new model. And like for me, I mean, I look at this COVID thing, which has been, you know, horrendous uh, at the time, but you remember what, what, when something happens, it happens, it's done. I can't mm -hmm. change it anymore. Mm -hmm. It's there. So instead of looking back going, whoa, it's me, what's going to happen? Oh, the world's falling apart. I'm like going, okay, I there's the opportunities yeah, here. Another direction. And I'm telling you, I've been, this is my fourth company. I have never in my entire life seen a more incredible time for an entrepreneur. Period. This is like there are so many problems that need to be solved. Mm -hmm. Such a shakeup in so many areas. This is like this is like the heyday for like oh I can think of a, how about if I do this right or what do I you know it's it's just it's website so people can actually check in and learn more. Um, yeah, well you can go to I think Livin's I think Livin dot live Livin L I V N dot live is where you can look about learn, learn a little bit about Livin. Um, if you just Google if you just Google oops somebody somebody's telling yeah. me right now hello I can't do this right now John. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you uh, type in think think. EXP and what will happen is it will bring you up and you can see all of our dome shows, you can find all that kind of stuff out about it and then my social is just all I A M Scott Page. So it's very simple to find me, I am Scott Page. And so we got about two minutes left. Okay. So what's uh, a piece of information inspiring people, what would you say to not only artists, you talked about artists, but people who may not be in the art world. What would you say to that? Well, you know, this always goes back to my favorite subject, which is consciousness. And I think mm -hmm. one of the most important things is, is we all need to take an inward look because that's the thing that's going to save the planet. I think what's going on right now is not about, you know, if you look at the president's races, it's not about who's in office. It's really a, a spiritual race on mm -hmm. sort of good and evil and kind of crazy stuff. It's a vibration because it's changing. This is mm -hmm. a world thing, mm -hmm. right? What's happening here is not here. People are it's rising everywhere. up all over the world, right? So it's a very interesting. I think the, the, the really issue is we've got the human condition, right? And so being identified with thinking and that's what the world is about is not the same as being able to see your thinking, being able to be rational and make those decisions. That comes from an inward journey. So uh, uh, all I can say is there's nothing more important to me. If people say, what do you work on every day? I work on that. I work on learning how to go to no mind, understanding, being look out and be as present as possible because I've said this probably on your show. I always say it. The only thing that's real is us sitting here right now. That's true. <laughs> that's it. And I mean that everybody. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you. Now, two minutes ago we were talking, that ain't real no more. All I can do is remember it. It's a 
two minutes from now, I have no idea because I can't touch that. So the only, the only step that matters is the one that you're taking right now and waking up to the point where you can be, you know, stop and smell the roses, which is really about being aware, huh, oh, what's going on? Where am I right now, right? Mm -hmm. So there's nothing more important than taking that inward journey. And here's really, I'll tell the real quick thing. Here's what you do, all right? Every day, as often as you can, stop yourself and ask you this, this one simple question. Where am I and what am I feeling right now? So stop yourself, be as still as you can, bring all your attention. I'm sitting in this room here and with this thing. And what am I feeling right now? If I'm feeling any anxiety, tension, or fear, I am identified with a thought because Unless there's a lion chasing me, me sitting here right now, I could be suffering like, oh man, my brain's spinning. How am I going to yeah. do this? Oh, geez. Oh, I'd be, just go crazy, right? But if you can grasp that concept, then you can start to see that the past is just, it's, it has no value anymore. It's like, there's it's gone. nothing. It's gone. It's like, wait, the future, who knows? Like people that put, oh, I got these goals and I got to make the goals. And then all of a sudden their, their journey changes and then they suffer. Oh, I didn't make my goals. What happened? I thought I was going to do and it up and down. Mm -hmm. And, and there, remember, the only step that's real is the one you're taking now. So the only thing that matters is the ride. That's true. Yeah. The ride. So all I do is every time I take a step, I, feel, I swear, this is how I feel. I take a step because I'm trying to be present as I possibly can all the time because that's where reality happens in the present, right? It doesn't happen anyplace else because when I'm drifting in my head, I'm off someplace, I'm not even paying attention to what's around me, right? So I, every time I take a step, I feel like that character uh, in the cartoons, you know, where you got the cliff and every time he takes a piece of the cliff falls off, piece of the cliff keeps falling off, falling off, falling off, right? That to me is the past. So I take a step. I mean, this is gone now. I don't even, it has no value to me. I don't worry about the outcome of anything. I, well, why would I care about the outcome? Because if I identify with the outcome, then if it doesn't outcome the way I want, it doesn't matter. It's really the ride. It's all about the ride. This is why I love playing chess. I feel like I've just been playing chess and I'm, I haven't made my move yet because you've been making moves. <laughs> but I agree with everything you're saying because that's kind of how I look at it. For me, the, the life is a chess game. I don't play the same way every mm -hmm. game. I don't know what, what game I'm going to play. I don't know. So that's why it's exciting to hear yeah. that because that's how I kind of Well, think it there's a wonderful piece, Alan Watts, called Life is Not a Journey. I guarantee everybody should go listen. It's like a two minute thing. Alan Watts is one of the great philosophers. And he talks about life is it's more like music mm -hmm. and dancing. If it's not about getting to the end of the song, otherwise the orchestra would go, ta-da, <laughs> yay, that was it, right? It's all about that spot, and that's the same way. Dancing's the same way. You don't, you don't dance to get to the end of the dance, mm -hmm. you dance to dance. Mm -hmm. Life is that same way. And I'm telling you, the most important thing on the planet is taking that inward journey, getting to the point where you can become awake enough. And I don't mean woke. That's a totally different ballgame. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about wake, <laughs> awake, uh, because that has to do with the fact that you're present enough that you can, you're not going to make bad decisions because it's that voice in the back that really makes the decisions because your mind is incapable of knowing truth from falsehood. It, they can't say this is right or this is wrong. It's impossible. I can prove it. Well, how I can prove it? If people knew that the mind was capable of knowing right from wrong, there'd be no war. Mm -hmm. Nobody would pick up a gun and blow anybody away. Nobody would take their five-year-old kid and martyr him off or something. If the mind was capable, it's really something else. And that's the awakening, I think, that really needs to happen on the planet. And uh, until that happens, we're going to be going through it. But what I would say, here's the good news. Consciousness is unfolding. Mm -hmm. It's all working exactly the way it's supposed to be. Otherwise, it wouldn't have happened this way. And everything is fine at the deepest level. At the deepest. When you get down to the deep level, everything is perfect. There's nothing there. Now, whether humans make it through this, doesn't matter because consciousness will mm -hmm. be fooled. And I say, is this my meat suit or am I part of the whole? Right? And so, as you start taking this journey, you start taking a different look at life in a whole different way that it's... This is just a meat suit. That's not who I am. Mm -hmm. Because as you start to become more aware, you start seeing yourself like, you know, I, I just remember I, I, I couldn't stay, I couldn't take it. I went through a period of life and it was the struggle where I suffered so hard that changed my life. It was the worst thing that happened to me was the best thing that happened to me. Yeah, yeah. And I mean that more than anything because inside suffering is where you finally say stop. 
and you start taking a different look and as you start examining these things you go wait a minute I can't live with myself is there I myself is there two of me yeah <laughs> right is there two of me right so you start going then you start realizing you start watching your thinking and you go well who's watching how does that work and as you can build deeper and deeper into it you start to realize that you're you're really I'm a, what's called a, a non-dualist I believe everything is one uh, you're mm -hmm. God I'm looking at myself everything mm -hmm. everything I see related. it's all I'm just that's what it is mm -hmm. right there's no something out here that we're here it's we're just it right it's all and at the quantum level we're just all energy right right and now even with what's interesting is quantum mechanics and quantum physics is now starting to prove what the great mystics and avatars from you know everybody from jesus zona rosa buddha all of them that we're pointing to mm -hmm. in this sort of spiritual and they're now starting to prove it in science you know they just came out with this thing that was they now believe the the the, the, the basic the big parts of the quantum physics world is that the the the, the future and the present happen at the same time, exactly. mm -hmm. right? And they, it's almost like, too, the idea that nothing is real until it's observed. That's mm -hmm. the Heisenberg principle, right? So they're all the f physics people, the kind of common knowledge is that your life is like a, it's like a video game in mm -hmm. the sense that when you're looking over here, it's, it, or like a virtual reality kind of thing, in the sense when you're looking here, you don't, there's nothing there, but until you turn to that side, like in VR, it doesn't even draw the pixels. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing there. So it's almost, that's the kind of thing. We're almost like in a video game looking, looking around, right? And so it's, it's just fascinating, the whole thing. And the whole human condition thing just really excites me. It's just it's fascinating to follow and watch. And like I said, uh, I, I love consciousness. So, yeah, yeah, living. so that's living. That's living, That's baby. Living. It's all about living. So with that, I want to thank Scott for coming in because that is deep stuff. Yep. It's so Duh. interesting and it's so, that's, I mean, you need to hear that. <laughs> I mean, so, for yeah. Scott, Terry, myself, this is Movie Reviews More. Thank you for that. If you see someone without a smile, keep the smile on my face. Give them one of right. and we will see you next week.